connecting you to the leaders in our community. This is Comcast Newsmakers. Hello, I'm Colleen Needles. Education Minnesota represents 70,000 teachers, support professionals, and higher education faculty members around the state. As president of the state's largest union, Tom Dewar is a strong advocate for keeping Minnesota schools at the top of the class in the nation, and he joins us now for this segment of Newsmakers. Tom, welcome. Thanks, Colleen. It's great good, to be here. Well, good to see you. Tell us a little bit about Education Minnesota and the work you do around the state. Well, we've been merged for 10 years, and we're the union that represents not only educators in K-12, but higher education faculty and support professionals that work with your kids every single day. And why is it important to have education professionals all organized under one umbrella? Well, I think it's, it's a good way to unify their voice, to make sure that our schools are the best they can be for our kids so they can be competitive in this 21st century. How did uh, schools fare in the latest legislative session? Well, it was a, it was a difficult session. Uh, we came out with flat funding, but that's really going to be a cut because today's dollars don't buy the same thing next year. And with the shift from the governor, it's actually going to be more difficult. We're going to see fewer academic programs and larger class sizes for some of our kids. And they're going to have less opportunities. So how critical is it? It's vitally important for our state and for our nation to have a strong uh, public education system. It's the great equalizer that allows kids to move from where they were to a higher station in life. And it's really important to drive the economy so that we create jobs, so that Minnesota is strong and vibrant as it has been in the past. Now we've heard um, a lot of mention of delay of payments to schools. I mean, what kind of an impact, I mean, it's governor's plan to delay certain payments. What kind of an impact does that have? Well, it's like asking you to work on 70% of your budget. So you're going to see short-term borrowing, you're going to see fewer academic programs, and fewer uh, extracurricular programs for our kids, which they really need to develop a comprehensive education which is going to make them lifelong learners, that's going to make them competitive in this global economy. So what, what's the alternative here? I mean, is there a need for a different funding mechanism? What would that look like for the schools? Yeah, I, I think it, it is. And what we're looking at is one that's equitable throughout the state. So no matter if you're in Black Duck or Bloomington, you know that you're going to have great opportunities, that it's sustainable so that we know from year to year what kind of programs you're going to have, and that it's sufficient so that the kids have the resources and the up-to-date materials that they need to have to work in this new global economy that we have. Well, you know, you're talking about equitable. We've seen studies point to an achievement gap that shows um, a difference in test scores based on race. And how are we, um, you know, how are we addressing that? Well, we need to address it in, in a multifaceted, systematic way, where we start with early childhood education and that we give the kids the resources so they know how to learn to read before they reach the age of third grade. And after that, they really read to learn. So we need to make sure that they have those small class sizes, up-to-date materials so that they can address it and we can close that achievement gap. It's not a silver bullet, but it's got to be a systematic approach to make sure that all of our kids have what they need to reach their academic potential. You alluded to this earlier, but we really have some uh, pretty amazing employers here in the state, but they depend on a very educated uh, workforce. So the impact of not keeping up with other states or certainly the world um, economies is uh, pretty profound here in, in Minnesota. Absolutely. The Mayo Clinic, 3M, those companies were built on a, a highly educated workforce and that allows us to continue not only to develop new companies but to sustain the ones that we have here in Minnesota and that's given us the quality of life that we've had. So a strong public education system is going to help our economy recover from this recession that we're in. Now, as you're head of the state's largest union, but you also have a pretty terrific foundation in your family as far as labor unions go. Yeah, my grandfather was Patrick Corcoran. He was a Teamster organizer in the 20s and 30s, and he ultimately sacrificed his life for the labor movement so that I can do the work that uh, I can do and that we have a 40-hour work week, that we have paid holidays, that we have a uh, weekend. And so I'm really quite honored, and I know that I have a great responsibility to make sure that I keep that uh, tradition going. Well, thank you so much for being here today and for the work you do for schools and kids across the state. Well, thanks for having Appreciate me. It. And if you'd like to learn more about Education Minnesota, its many programs to support and promote the state's educational community, you can visit their website at educationminnesota.org. And that's going to do it for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Colleen Needles. Thank you for watching.